Okay, here we go with 4.2 review. We're going to start with uh, graphing y equals e to the x and mostly here just to get you to know how to use your e to the x key. Um, as you read the notes for this section 4.2 on exponential functions, exponential functions have this L shape that either the L goes up or maybe it goes down or maybe it's reversed, but we're going to start with e to the x and exponential functions are easy to graph. They don't have any tricky things like asymptotes or uh, vertical asymptotes. It does have a horizontal asymptote, but you really don't need to graph it first. Just graph a whole bunch of points. We're going to find y when x equals 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. And to to find these values, well, e to the 0, anything to 0 is 1. e to the 1 is e itself, which is 2.718, and it goes on and on. And if that's new to you, you should go back to the notes and read about e in the notes. Now, e squared, to find e squared, you have to find your e to the x key on your calculator, punch in 2, and then equals now, on most calculators, that's how you do it. Some calculators, you put the exponent in first, and then e to the x. Now, e to the x is usually, uh, in fact, it's always a second function. You're going to have to use a second function key on your calculator to get this. Okay. Putting two into your calculator after the e to the x function or before depending on your calculator you should get 7.389 and then a, a whole bunch of digits after that because it repeats forever e to the negative one you have to raise e to the negative one power you should get 0.367 and negative e to the negative two is 0 0.135 if you're not getting these consult your manual if that doesn't help Go on Google and search for how to use your calculator to find these powers. But do that until you're able to get these values. It's really important that you know how to find e to a power using your e to the x key. Okay, so then we plot these. x equals 0, y equals 1, x equals 1, y equals 2.78, um, x equals 2, y equals 7.8. 389, just a little over 7, x equal negative 1, 0.36, and negative x, e to the negative 2 is 0.135. And so we get the L shape curve. That's typical, and in the notes, I, I believe I have e, uh, 2 to the x graphed. It looks very similar to this. Okay, now we're going to graph e to the negative x minus 2 by using shift rules. And when we replace x with negative x, we reflect this graph across the y-axis. That was one of the shift rules. Um, we covered that in 2.5. It's not really used much until you get to exponential functions. So this is this graph here with the dotted line is e to the negative x, but when we're shifting it down two, so we go down one, two, and we get this graph. And I'm not even going to find the points. Mostly I just want to talk about what would you do to e to the x to get this graph in green. And what you have to do is reflect across the y-axis and then shift down two. So there was a homework problem. Um, it was number two that says, what do you have to do to the e to the x function to get this other function? 
So this is what we're doing. We're using those shift rules. Replacing x with negative x shifts across the y-axis. Subtracting 2 moves it all down 2. Okay, the next function shift we're going to look at is graph e to the x minus 3. What would we do to the e to the x function? Well, all we've done here is replaced, we have replaced x with x minus 3. If you remember from 2.5, this shifts it right 3. So we take all those points and move them to the right 3. And our graph is looking like that. So this is y equals e to the x minus 3. This next problem is uh, like number 3 of the homework and also I believe it was number 7 in WebAssign. We have an exponential function a as a function of t equals 150e to the negative 0.015t which gives the milligrams of medicine after t minutes. So this medicine is given and the milligrams in the patient decreases with this x according to this exponential function. So how many milligrams after 60 minutes? How many milligrams after 600 minutes? And then I added one more question. Um, how many milligrams initially, you know, right away? See if you can calculate these. Use your e to the x key. Um, put parentheses around the negative 0.015 times the 60 in parentheses and calculate these out and see if you can get these correct answers. So pause the video and do these. Don't just watch me do them. You need to be able to get these answers on your own. Okay, for part A, we plug in 60 for T, and you should get 60.985, <clears throat> and I rounded, to, rounded this to 61 milligrams. In part B, 600 minutes, which is 10 hours, 0 0.0185 milligrams. So the medicine is almost gone after 10 hours. And that's what we see with things like ibuprofen. They last for eight hours, perhaps, six hours, eight hours. By 10 hours, it's all gone. If you're taking ibuprofen, you know what that's like. The toothache returns, eight hours, and it's almost like an alarm clock. Okay, part C. How many milligrams initially? Well, initially, T is zero. Zero times negative 0.015 is zero e to the 0 is 1, because anything to the 0 power is 1. So 150 times 1 is 150. That's how many milligrams you're getting initially, 150. Okay, the next problem is like number 4 of the homework, and it's also like one of the web assigned problems. The number of fish in a lake after stocking it with fish is given by P as a function of t equals 3200 over 1 plus 4e to the negative 0.02t, where t is months after stocking. So question A, how many fish um, were in this lake right after stocking? Well, right after stocking, immediately after stocking, t is 0. Now if t is 0, we have e to the negative 0 0.02 times 0, e to the becomes e to the 0, e to the 0 is 1, so this whole thing simplifies to 3200 over 1 plus 4 times 1, or 3200 over divide by 5. And when you divide 3200 by 5, you get 600. 40. So 640 fish immediately right after it's stocked. Next question, how many fish after one year? Well, we don't use t equal 1. t is in months, so we use t equals 12. And now we plug 12 in and evaluate it and see if you can get that correct answer. 
So try that on your own. Try to calculate it out. Then come back and check on this. Okay, for um, this part B, we plug in t equal 12, and I show you the calculator keys, at least for most calculators, where you're putting in things left to right. This was actually a TI-85 graphing calculator, but if you have another calculator where you enter left to right, it'll look quite a bit like this. 3200 divide by, then the denominator, we need a parentheses around that denominator, 1 plus 4 times we use our e to the x key or e to the power key. Then we have a parentheses, which I believe your calculator puts in for you. Then we need the negative sign, not the minus sign, but the negative sign. Then 0 0.02 times 12, then a parentheses. But then we need another parentheses because that encloses the whole denominator. So you need that extra parentheses and then an equal sign. And round it off, you should get 772. Okay, last question. What happens as t goes to infinity? Well, as t goes to infinity, that quantity, e to the negative 0.02 times infinity, becomes e to the negative infinity, which is 1 over e to the infinity. And that is going to approach zero. So as t goes to infinity, this whole thing is going to zero. Four times zero is zero. 3200 divided by one plus zero is just 3200. So this 3200 gives the maximum amount for an infinite amount of time. As time goes on, the population will get closer and closer and closer to 3,200. And what I've done here is I've graphed this function. I, I used uh, Desmos.com, which is a really nice graphing program. If you haven't already checked that out, I would, I would do that because it, it really is great for graphing this kind of function. Um, you can use a graphing calculator, but it's a really a lot of work to try and fit that graph in, but Desmos is so easy. And what happens is you have what's called the logistics curve, and that happens to be the, the curve that models a pandemic, which is what we're experiencing now. So this fish stocking curve also is what's used to, to model you know uh, the spread of influenza. Usually, generally, it, it models an unchecked spread. Right now we're checking the influenza, so it's not really following this curve as well. But for an unchecked influenza outbreak, it follows this curve um, quite closely. And you can see on the curve, 640 is at time zero, 712, or that's seven, not 12, 772 is at time t equal 12 months. And then eventually, with enough months, it approaches that 3,200 figure. Okay, well, that's all for 4.2. Uh, if you have other questions, um, post in discussions.